I'm now going to be in conversation with the General Secretary of the OPEC. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you Welcome very much. Welcome to India. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So the OPEC members would like nothing more to see crude prices back at tri triple digits, $100 a barrel. We in India would not like anything further than that. Even the Saudi ambition of $80 a barrel has bad news for the Indian fisc and our, uh, the, the sovereign balance sheet. How do you balance the needs of the developing economies like let's say that of India and what all of you producers want? Thank you very much for bringing this uh, very important issue. Uh, I want to use this uh, opportunity you are giving me and this uh, medium uh, to assure our Indian consumers in particular and consumers in general that OPEC as well as the non-OPEC partners in the declaration of cooperation have the interest of not only producers but consumers in all the decisions that we have taken so far as well as in the implementation of these decisions. As you have heard this morning, we are probably the only ones. When we take decisions, we do not only look at our own interests, but we are concerned also how those decisions are likely to impact our consumers. Hmm. Why? Because we sit on over 81% of global proven oil reserves. Therefore, we have, as you should expect, a vested interest in the longevity of oil as an energy source of choice for the foreseeable future. Therefore, we are in a strategic partnership, written or unwritten, with our consumers, particularly countries like India. India, as we have heard from the able and visionary Prime Minister, Modi this morning in declaring the IEF 16 ministerial meeting open will continue to be the engine of growth, not only in terms of global economic growth, but also in demand for energy in general, but demand in oil and gas in particular. And hence, he also said, he yes, also said, yes. artificial distortion of the crude market is self-defeating as has been seen. So to put it very bluntly, how is OPEC along with Russia not doing that? How is it not artificially distorting the market by cutting down on production to see prices it wants? To the contrary, what happened was a market that went into a severe dislocation. How? By 2014, the oil market had registered higher supplies, much, much higher than demand. And its elementary economics, whenever commodity supplies surpass demand, you see a buildup of inventory, stocks. But in the case of this cycle, we expected probably that the market would rebalance itself in the fullness of time. But we found out that these supplies continue to rise and these stocks continue to build up both onshore and offshore to unprecedented levels, as I said this morning in my presentation, of about 400 million barrels over the industry's five-year average. This had never been registered since data uh, But you cannot to control collected. the United States. It has distorted the market. Look at its shale production. Look what's happening in North America. What we did was to address this variable, the variable of stocks that had built up to this unsustainable level by addressing supply that surpassed demand and in 2017, we just reviewed our numbers here, we have achieved 109% conformity levels. And the result is that we saw that 400 million barrels overhang shrunk to about 43 to 44 million. And hence, the response, positive response in the market, including in confidence, including in decision uh, making. So what we have done is to assist the market to come back to balance, to restore the stability, not only 
in our interest, but also in the interest of consumers. Then what because is what the, the right prime price? minister, what the prime minister also referred to, is the issue of volatility, the issue of uncertainty, which no investor is insulated from. No investor will come and invest at the level that we expect. It's a very capital intensive industry yes, I get that. with the continuous level of volatility that we have seen with the rising uncertainties. Now confidence is returning. Now everybody is focusing on return of investment. So I want to reassure consumers, particularly in India, that we are on course to restoring this stability on a sustainable basis. But could that be at $80 to a barrel? And you know why I'm asking 80 because the Saudi Arabia Crown Prince has said ambitions are for $80 a barrel. Is that the new rebalance the OPEC and its uh, friends from outside are looking at? I will reiterate for the upteenth time. OPEC as an organization, we have no price objective. Our objective remains as enshrined in our statute to assist the market working collaboratively, not only among ourselves, but also with producers outside OPEC to try and manage in maintaining that stability. The market in the fullness of time provides that equilibrium price. The equilibrium price at which both producers and consumers will be comfortable. Higher prices affects demand and at the end of the day may not be in the interest of either consumers or producers. We have seen what low prices could also do in 2014, yeah. 2015, 2016. We in OPEC, we had lost cumulatively over one trillion US dollars in terms of revenues. Oil companies have also lost massively in terms of profitability. In the United States that you made reference to, over 100 companies filed for bankruptcy. Now, all this is bad news for the industry. We would like to see this industry to continue to be the industry that will fuel growth, development, and prosperity. Oil fuels the current civilization. And oil, as you have heard today, will continue to fuel growth and development for the foreseeable future. Both Still OPEC, electric vehicles both and self OPEC, and driverless cars don't OPEC take over? And the IEA have confirmed to you beyond any reasonable doubt that there is no peak in demand for oil uh, in the foreseeable future. The EVs, the renewables, these are all music for the future. We, our member countries, are also heavily invested okay. in alternative sources. Why? because of the growing demand for energy. No one single source mm. will meet even the current Correct. demand, which the Prime Minister made reference to, of the 1.2 billion people who have no access to electricity. electricity. In our projections of 2040, additional 1.8 billion people will come into this world. Energy poverty is a task. We must address energy poverty in order to pull out these folks from abject poverty. Before I let you go, my final question. OPEC cannot live in isolation in this world. You have chosen an ally in Russia. Uh, look at the geopolitics, look at the tension that are existing right now between the developed world, between the United States and Russia, a breakdown in relations. Look what's also happening in Syria. Donald Trump has decided to cancel his trip to South America. How is all of this going to impact OPEC if you're going to see a lot of the nations continue to antagonize with Russia? Our partnerships cuts across producing countries. It also cuts across consuming countries. We not only have an ongoing partnership under the Declaration of Cooperation with the non-OPEC led by the Russian Federation, so far 10 countries from the non-OPEC, but we also have an ongoing energy dialogue since 2005 with the Russian Federation. We also have energy dialogue with India, mm. which is a consuming country. It is only in OPEC 
that you can see this holistic approach to a strategic issue such as energy, such as oil, because it affects everybody. In all other industries in this world, they look at their own slates. We look at a comprehensive global slate yeah. because of the multiplier effect of the decisions we take or we don't take, not only on oil, but on all other sources of energy. But then how will you stay away from the trade war between what's happening? Forget with the breakdown in relation between Russia and the United States. You've also got a trade war on between US and China. How do you stay away from that? China is a huge consumer. China, India, they are one of the biggest consumers and they will continue to be the biggest consumers of oil. OPEC has been able to insulate itself from geopolitics throughout our existence. We had bad periods when even our member countries yeah. have issues yeah. among themselves, but we were able to overcome that, to sit down together and look at issues dispassionately in the interest of everybody. You can do that with Syria as well? Syria is not a member of OPEC. No, I know he'll be able to do that with Syria if things escalate. Like I said, Donald Trump cancelling his trip to take care of the Syrian crisis. We are confident that global leadership at the end of the day will prevail to maintain peace and stability mm. in all regions of the world. It is the responsibility of global leadership to ensure that everybody is secure in this world. And we remain confident that we have this crop of leadership and they will deliver. I know you're running out of time, so I'm going to let you go. And the next time you're in India, I hope to have a dialogue with you on electric vehicles, renewable energy and the plans that OPEC has. Thank you so much for Thank talking you. to Thank us. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.